Now, we are in the coastline. This is the coastline of East Africa. And uh, in this video, we are going to talk about the spiritual powers which control the coastline of East Africa. This will be a very, very important video for you to watch. You know, marine spirits, they are highly used for witchcraft. A lot of witchcraft takes place in areas where we have water bodies. And uh, this will be a very long video to be like a documentary. And I'm going to explain to you the spiritual powers which control the coastline of East Africa. Now, in this video, currently, right now I'm in Mombasa. This is Mombasa. And um, I'll use Mombasa as a, as a case study because mostly all the coastline cities and towns are almost the same. They have the same culture, they have the same food, they have the same way of life, the same setting. If you go to Mombasa, you go to Malindi, they almost have the same setting. You go to Mombasa, go to Dar es Salaam, almost have the same setting. Go to Pemba, almost they have the same setting. So in this video, we're going to talk about the spiritual power which control these areas. There's a lot of witchcraft in this area, which believers need to know. Now, these areas, this coastline, it is the gate of East and Central Africa. This is the entry point of East and Central Africa. In the early days, the missionaries used this, you know, this coastline to enter the interior part of Africa, the, the interior part of Eastern Africa. They used the Portuguese came. No, now I'm going to take you around for Jesus. For Jesus, I'm going to tell you the mysteries which govern these areas. Now, I want to know that cities are not governed by politicians. Cities are not governed by, let's say, the government. Yes, they like practically govern it but cities are governed by altars which are raised in that city now in this video i'm going to expose to you the different altars which operate in these areas which govern these territories and for you to subdue and for you to have dominion you need to know which altars operate in these territories and how to go about them the bible said that do not be ignorant of of the devil's devices now in this video very important for believers to watch it if you're a businessman if you are a pastor if you are an intercessor you're a businessman it's important for you to watch this, this video because i'm going to expose secrets secrets which nobody has told you things which i've not had i'm going to ex explain to you how these things affect you even those who are not living in the coastline those who are living in the parts of uganda or in the interior parts uh, like in, in central, not necessarily in the coastline. I'm going to show you how these forces affect you. It's very important. So let us go and start first with the... I want to talk about first the history of the coastline. Now for you, before you go to deal with the altars, you need to know the patterns which are in the, in the coastline. We need to know the history because life follows patterns. What are the patterns which are in this place? And I'm, I'm going to reveal to you the patterns. Now, I'm going to begin with the history. And for, for me to talk about the history, let us go to for Jesus. I show you what happened. Let's go. Hello guys. Thank you for tuning in. I'm Cleo Faswanyama, Cleo with him. And this is Christian Media, where we travel the world to give you local and international Christian news, commentaries, Bible-based teachings, gospel music, plus many more. And if you want to support us financially, use the information on the screen. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. Thank you. See you again. Hello, guys. We are the Fort Jesus now. This is the Fort Jesus. Now, for you to know any uh, how to possess the territory of any city, you need to know the history of that city. And uh, here is the history, if you get to know the history of Mombasa. You get to know the history of Mombasa. And uh, this is the Fort Jesus. A lot of things happened here. This, uh, it was built in 1593. And uh, I'm going to explain to you what happened. Okay? Now, this Fort Jesus was a military base. Fort Jesus was a military base. It was built by the Portuguese in 1593 when they had come to the East Africa to conquer it. Now, that's why I was saying it's very important to know the history of a place. Now, uh, 
this Mombasa, I'm using this uh, Mombasa as a case study. We have for Jesus in Mombasa. We have another one, Vasco, Vasco, Vasco da Gama in Malindi. There are so many structures like this which were built by the ancient civilization when they were coming to the coastline of East Africa. And the essence of building such structure was to, to, you know, to have dominance, to enforce their dominion so that they can control the coastline of East Africa. So it's very important for you to understand this story. Now, the, this island of Mombasa was initially called Mvita. Mvita is a Swahili name meaning war. So you, you see this is a military camp. It, it was like a army barrack. There's a lot of war which took place in this place. That's why you have the canoes and everything, these structures. You see it was built like a castle-like thing for, you know, people used to, to fight a lot of war here. Now, one thing i like you to understand is that uh, for you to possess the gates of Mombasa, you need to know the history. You need, to, you need for you to possess the gates of any city. You need to know the history of that particular. What are the patterns which took place? Now, when you get to know the patterns, you're able to know what happens. Anytime you go to any place, you know, um, when you go to the doctor, they'll ask you your, your medical report, your medical history. But they want to know the patterns. From looking at the patterns, they can be able to predict what are the happenings in that particular place. Now, this place, it shows that the coastline is a place of intensive warfare because they had built this, 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 this called for Jesus. It was for war. They had their, uh, their canoes to fight the people who are, who, who are coming to this side. So, this coastline is a place of intensive warfare. That means in the realm of the spirit, there is still warfare in this place. The kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light, they are still waging war in this coastline city. Now, this is why uh, it, it shows us this story of Fort Jesus. Now, this reminds me of the story of the wall of Jericho. The wall of Jericho was built for, you know, to prevent the Israelites or the enemy from invading. So they built this fort to have control so that they can control the coastline. We have one here in Fort Jesus, Mombasa. There's another one in Malindi, Fasco da Gama. The other, along the coastal strips, you'll find this structure, the coastal strip of East Africa. Now, the main aim, this was for war. So this gives us a pattern that the coastline is a place of war. There's a lot, there's a lot of spiritual warfare in the coastline of Mombasa. So this is why I usually tell uh, the pastors and intercessors who are around this region of the coast, you need to be very prayerful because this is a place of war. Mombasa city by itself, who is known as Mvita, was formerly known as Mvita, even though today we have a constituency called Mvita. Mvita is a Swahili word meaning war. Understand? So this is a place of intensive warfare. Till today, there is still warfare in the realm of the spirit in this place. Because that is the pattern which has been laid down. Till today, there is a lot of warfare. You know, the Portuguese came and built this place. And they called it Fort Jesus. The Arabs came and took over the port from them. You know, the, the Portuguese came to spread Christianity. The Arabs came and, you know, conquered them. And, you know, and spread uh, Islam. That's why we have a lot of, you know, Islam, you know, Mombasa is dominated by Muslim, a lot of uh, Islam in Mombasa. Why? Because the Arabs were able to conquer these Portuguese, they were able to drive them out of this fort. That's why the whole of uh, the coastline, uh, East African coastline strip was uh, being ruled by a sultan at a certain point because he was able to conquer the city and then you find that's why we have most muslims along if you go from mombasa to lamu malindi along the coastal strip of east east africa along i go to dar es salaam along just the, the coastal strip of east east africa there's a lot of islamic 
tradition. There's a long there are, there's a lot of Arabic lifestyle, the food which they eat, you know, the culture, they even eat married. You know, some even remain here. The culture, there's so much Arabic culture because of the of the you know the dominance which the Sultan had in the coastal strip. So initially the Portuguese had control of this place. The Portuguese were Christians, but later on the Arabs came and took over and defeated them and they were subdued. Till today, this is a place of warfare. So I'm not talking about physical war, I'm talking about spiritual war. You need to wage war in this place so that you can have dominance. There is a reason why they wanted this territory. Till today, this territory is important. In the realm of the spirit, the east, the, the coastal strip of East Africa is still a gateway. It's still a gateway. And it's very important. There is an agenda which the enemy wants to enforce in this coastal strip. That's why we need to rise as believers to possess this territory. And the only way to do it is by prayer. Let me take a round. Come and see. Right, guys now it's important for you to know the patterns of a territory now uh, this coastline strip of East Africa is very important for uh, for the, uh, East Africa and other parts of Africa because um, for goods to enter for instance for goods uh, like the heavy commercial goods to enter the parts of Rwanda and Uganda they have to pass through the port of Mombasa why it is a gate? It's, a, it's an entry point. If not the port of Mombasa, is the port of 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 Dar es Salaam in Tanzania. Why? Because this coastal strip is a gate, and whoever controls the gate controls everything. Now, the same way we see in the physical realm, this place is a gate. Now, in the realm of the spirit, the coastal strip still remains to be a gate. That's why you find when people want witchcraft, they either go to Tanzania, somewhere in Pemba. You remember the story of the testimony of Pastor James Kawalwa of Uganda? They went to Pemba. Pemba is in the coastal strip of East Africa. The highest level of, of, witch, of witchcraft is found along the coastline. Why? Because of the water bodies. And I explained it in a, in a subsequent part which is coming. Now, the essence of, for, for us of this documentary is to make Christians understand the importance of the coastline. Be inter let's take charge of the coastline by prayer, interceding, possessing the gates of, of this coastline. Because some of the problems we are, we are, we are facing at the mainland, in Uganda, in other nations, landlocked countries, are caused by the things which happen at the coastline. Why? Because the coastline is the gates. Because you know that for you to, for you to in the ancient days, for you to possess any territory, you need to, to, to possess the gates first. Now, the coastline is the gate, the gateway of Eastern Central Africa. This way, you find slaved, slaves were transported from that point. Missionaries came from that point. The British, the people who came to colonize us, they first came to Africa using that point because it is the gateway. So, whoever controls that gateway spiritually controls a lot of things in East Africa. So, if you allow witches and witches, and wizards to control the coastal strip. They'll have a say. You'll have, they'll control so many things. They'll control the economy. They'll control the businesses. They'll control the politics. So whoever you allow to control the control the coastal strips will have a lot of influence. Will have a lot of power. And we'll we'll end up going you now trying now to intercede to you know try to outdo what the devil is trying to do. But now the, the time is now for us to possess the gates. For us to take charge of this coastal strip by prayer so that we can subdue it and put it under the authority and the obedience of our Lord Jesus Christ.
anytime you walk into a city, the first thing you check are the are the historical monuments. What are the you know statues which are built around the cities? You know, such statues act as altars. You know, in the Bible we see about uh, the golden calf which the Israelites built. Now it looked like an innocent calf, but behind any statue there is a spirit. Now here, right behind me, in in the town of Mombasa, we have this. These are the elephant tusks. Now, this elephant tusk was set up in the 1950s by the Queen of England. And uh, if you check the Bible, you'll hear in the book of Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18, there's a, there's a passage which talks about the four horns which scattered Judah. Now, if you, if you check behind me, these are four horns. And there's a mystery behind these horns. Now, let me tell you something. Statues leak look innocent statues look like the something beautiful statues look like you know it's amazing it makes a city beautiful i'm not against statues i'm not against uh, uh this but i want you to know as a believer behind those statues there are spirits which govern the city behind those statues there are altars this is why even in the ton commandments god say that do not make any given uh, images because behind those images there are spirits which control a city they are spirits which control the place. This is where you find when you even go to a ritualist, you'll find there are statues, there are idols, there are things like dolls. Behind them, there are spirits which, you know, they monitor and they communicate with the, with the diviner. Now, behind this, there is a spirit which scatter the Eastern Central Africa. Let me tell you something. I'm using Mombasa as a case study, but you find such kind of statues can be found even in your city. Such kind of monuments can be found in Dar es Salaam, can be found in Malindi, can be found even in a city. Now, when you enter into a city, look at the statues. What, they, what are the statues which are raised in that cities? Now, such statues have a meaning in the realm of the spirit. I pray that God will give you a revelation to know what is the meaning behind any statue raised in a particular city. Now, in this particular case, we have these four horns. And you know, the work of the four horns is to scatter. Zechariah 1.18, the, the four horns scatter Judah. They scatter. Now, you find that because Mombasa is an entry point, this Mombasa, this city, is an entry point, is a gateway to eastern central Africa. Why? Be because of the ocean, because of the, of the, you know, of the Indian Ocean, we have the port. Mombasa is a gateway. Lao is a gateway. Malindi is a gateway. Dar es Salaam is a gateway. That's why even in the ancient time, the, you know, the white man, the missionaries, the Portuguese, they said, uh, okay, the missionaries, the white people who are coming to Africa, they came through the Indian Ocean. It was the gateway. It's how they accessed this part of Africa. Even when they were taking slaves from the interior part of Africa, they would take them and then bring them to the coast and then transport them to the to other uh, other parts of the world. So it shows how important this place is. This place is a gateway. Is a gateway. So whatever happens at the gates controls the mainland. So this is where powerful gates are. People say that you shall you no, know, you shall possess the gates of your enemy. Gates are symbols of authority. Now a gate, Mombasa is a gate city, Lamu is a gate city, Malindi is a gate city, Dar es Salaam is a gate city. All cities which are found at the coastline of East Africa and any other coast, they are gate cities because they, are, they, are, they give entry point for, you know, for people to access the city. For instance, in this city of Mombasa, we have the port of Mombasa. Now through the port of Mombasa, many goods, they, they come to the country, they go to Rwanda, they go to Uganda through the port because, you know, uh, such uh, heavy commercial goods cannot come by air, they come by sea. So the ports of Mombasa being here, it's also a, a gateway. It gives access for things to come from other parts of the world to enter this, this part of Africa. Now, that makes this place very crucial, very spiritual. That's why we have this altar here. This is an altar. It is beyond a statue. Now, do we mean that we remove it? No. Because sta um, Remote, dealing with it, with things physically doesn't give a solution. Now, what what is needed is to deal with the spirit behind the statue. There is a spirit behind the statue which scatter. The spirit of the four horns which scatter. It scatters areas in this place. It 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 it, it, it. it scatters. It works against ministries. It works against businesses. In fact, you know such. These are the altars which work against the church. 
These are the altars which work against Christian businesses. These are the altars which are which work against the work of God. Why? Because they have been raised to scatter. So you may think innocently they look like a, uh, like something beautiful, but no, behind them there is a spirit. There is a spirit which monitor and scatters people. So it's very important to deal with this. Now, how do you deal with this with this kind of status in your city? There, there might be statues. Now, this is just one of them. There are many statues in, in many cities. For instance, in Nairobi, we have K KICC. KICC was built like a, uh, like a penis of a donkey. KICC, the shape of KICC is, is like a penis of a donkey. Now, this is why it, it, uh, it brings a spirit of immorality in Nairobi. So, understand. So, when you go to a city, you find people are behaving in a certain way. Not, you think that they're they are just like that. There are altars which are raised. These are the altars which control the territories. These are the altars which speak and control the behavior, the patterns, and the life and the lifestyle of the people living in the city. Now, to deal with them, this is an instruction which God gave me a long time ago. As intercessors, you should make time to pray around the city. Many years ago, even before COVID started, God had given me this, this mandate. I would, take, I would take a car, drive around the city, praying, interceding, just praying around the city. I want intercessors, pastors, churches to make that, uh, you know, to take that initiative. It is important. You can get inside the church van and as the church moves around as the church van or the church bus or any other bus, you can, you can get a car. As you move around the city, just cruising around the city, praying in tongues, praying over the city, interceding over the city. Many times I've come here secretly to anoint these homes, just to, to, to silence this spirit, spirit would scatter. Now that is the work of a priesthood. The Bible says that he has called us to become priesthood in this nation. So it is very necessary for us to maintain that work of priesthood so that we can establish the dominion which Christ has given us. Now, this is why you find you can't be a city, you can't be a city, you, you, you'll find that laws are being passed which are not good, things are happening in the city, crime rate is high, prostitution is high, many things are happening. In fact, this road where I'm standing, where this holds at this tester, there's a lot of prostitution along this road. There's a lot of, this is a place where it is known for a lot of prostitution. In Mombasa, where I'm standing right now, because of these horns. Now it is a spiritual thing. I'm not saying that we destroy the horns. No, it's not an issue of destroying the horns. It's the issue of interceding, silencing the spirit which be which is behind the horns, silencing the spirit which is behind the statute, silencing the spirit which is behind, you know, all those um, evil spirits. Now, another thing I like to to explain to you. You know, when God uh, told Moses to be at Abanapol. In the wilderness, he gave him a pattern after the order of the tabernacle in heaven. Understand? So you, you see, structures can attract spirits. The same way that tabernacle in the wilderness could attract the presence of God. Structures like this attract evil spirits. Structures like, you know, there are many. This is just an example. There are so many structures. There are so many buildings. You know, those, uh, that star sign which has a cycle. A circle. Which, uh, uh, uh. There's a star, and then it has been encircled with a circle. That, 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 that drawing itself can attract a lot of demonic presence anywhere you go. So it is important for us to intercede as intercessors. Go around the city, praying for the city. You don't need to make noise. You don't need to disturb anybody. You don't need to be shouting. You can just be strolling in the evening as you are praying around the city, just committing the sins to the Lord. This is the time. This is the work. Of the end time church to do in your city you should have intercessors just going around the city praying you can you you can pray as you're driving with your car you can pray as you're taking your evening walks around the town praying and interceding for the cities because in this in in many towns there are many structures like this which are put up and such structures they are they they act as altars they act as a, a portal whereby you know they 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 give access to demonic entities, entities, they give legal rights to spirits to dominate territories. So that's the most important thing we need to do. We need to pray over it. There's no need to demolish them. Because when you talk about demolition, that will be something else. What we need to do is to silence them from the realm of the spirit. You silence them, the realm of the spirit, and you see that there will be a change. Now, in your city, 
What are the structures in your city? What are the statues in your city? Ask yourself. Go around your city and check. There are statues which, you know, if you look at them, the Spirit of God will show you they are not normal. They are structures. They are buildings. Even buildings. Not only idol like this, idols like this or statues like this. We have buildings which are built in a certain way. They, they act as a photo. There are some designs which are from hell. Such designs, they attract demonic entities into a place. They attract demonic entities. So, look around your city. What do you have in your city? What are the structures raised in your city? Those structures, they are altars. And they need to be pulled down by prayer. Not by demolition. So, go around your city and ask yourself. In the city of Mombasa, we have this. When you go to Lamu, there's something else. When you go to Dar es Salaam, there's something else. When you go to Kremba, there's something else. When you go to LA, Washington DC, there's something else. What are the structures in the cities? Okay, you may not be able to, to identify them, but what you can do, make an effort to pray for the city. Make an effort of going around the city, interceding, bringing down walls. You know what the Bible tells us? The walls of Jericho were brought down when they went round and round and round. The walls of Jericho were brought down. The same way, every time we go around the city, praying, interceding, these walls, the spiritual entities behind these, these statues, behind these idols, behind any building which is acting as an altar, is being pulled down by the power of the Holy Ghost. It's important. So, let's check it out. Now, one of the strongest, one of the strongest altars, all the strongest cities, sorry, uh, the strongest uh, forces of darkness, which operates in the coastline of East Africa, is the Marine Kingdom. Water is very spiritual. Water is highly spiritual. Even in the book of Genesis, they said that the Spirit of the Lord moved upon the waters. Waters attract spirits. But what spirits do they attract? Now, the Marine Kingdom is one of the powerful and the most stubborn uh, uh, forces of darkness which we have, which we deal with in our daily lives. Now, I want you to tell you something. You know, most witches and wizards draw their power from the Marine World. That's how powerful the Marine Kingdom is. Now, the Marine Kingdom represents foundations. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, I can't remember the part, says that the Lord God laid the foundations of the earth upon the waters. God laid the foundations, the foundations of the earth on the waters. That means these waters represent foundations. So when somebody bewitches you and using using marine spirits, that means that witchcraft it becomes foundational. It becomes a foundation. It becomes you no know, foundational witchcraft is very difficult to deal with. Foundational problems are very strong because today you'll cast that demon out, tomorrow it will come again. You'll cast the demon out, it'll come again. Why? Because it's a foundational problem. Now, when Moses went to Egypt, the first miracle which God t told Moses to do is to turn water into blood, apart from the turning the sticks into snakes. Now, the first, you know, the big miracle, it was turning water into blood. Now, you may think that it was just a show of power, a show of might. No. Egypt used the river Nile to Egypt draw power from the river Nile. The witchcraft of Egypt highly dependent on the river Nile. That's why rivers are also can be used for witchcraft. Whenever there are rivers, there are lakes, there is usually a high level of, of witchcraft around surrounding water bodies. Now, this being the Indian Ocean, being bigger than even the... River Nile, that means the witchcraft here is also bigger. Now, God told Moses to go and turn water into blood. By doing that, Moses was paralyzing the power base of Egypt before he started his agenda of freeing the Israelites. So the first thing God told Moses, go and turn water into blood. By turning water into blood, God had hit the power base of Egypt. 
Now Egypt was now paralyzed. That's why Moses could now do whatever he wanted to do. Because listen, Egypt was so very powerful in witchcraft to a point that Moses was throwing down his stick, turning into a snake, and Pharaoh is laughing, saying, Moses, what are you trying to do? Pharaoh told Moses, whatever you can do, I can do twice. I can do double. Now, Moses turned one stick into a snake. Pharaoh did two. Two sticks turned into a snake. But the, the snake of Moses swallowed the two snakes of the Egyptians. Now, that shows that Egypt and Pharaoh were ready to retaliate. They were ready to deal with Moses. They were ready to attack him spiritually. Now, if Moses had just continued, Pharaoh would have attacked him spiritually. I'd probably finish him off. Some of you, you are going to territories to pray. You don't know how the territory is wired. You don't know the spiritual system, the spiritual governance of a territory. And you want to take it for Jesus. You, you go, that's why you find most of you, you, you backfire. You, get, you come out there with sickness. You come out there with madness. You come out there, the devil has hit you even more. Because you don't know the spiritual strategies. You know, when you're going to war, you don't just go to war. You need to know how to strategize so that you can win the war. So, God told Moses, go and turn the water into blood. By doing that, the power base of Egypt was paralyzed. Now, Moses could do everything he, could tell, he, he wanted to do. Nobody could harm him. Nobody could touch him. That's why he said, have made you a God unto Pharaoh, and Aaron is your prophet. That's why the whole of Egypt was afraid of Moses. Why? Because he paralyzed the powers in the marine kingdom. What do you do concerning the marine kingdoms? Now, there is a teachings... In the church today, people say that, hey, don't go to the river. They are marine spirits. Don't go to the ocean. It is true. Marine spirits dwell in water. But the question is, did God create the, the water for evil spirits? No. Jesus himself was baptized in the river. When he came out from the river, he was full of the Holy Ghost. If Jesus was baptized during our time, we would have said, ah, that one has marine spirits. Because how come he's being baptized in river and then he, he comes out, he goes to the wilderness, he starts doing miracles. You see, the way people nowadays suspect anybody who does miracles is of the devil. Understand? So, water bodies are not created for witchcraft. This is why as a believer, you need to exercise your authority. The Bible says that the creation is waiting and groaning for the manifestations of the sons of God. What my my priestly responsibility god gave me responsibility over this territory and i'm here in mombasa time after time i usually come to the beach just to pray just to anoint the beach take the holy communion at the beach pour the blood of jesus christ at the water here why to silence any forces of darkness rising that's my priesthood responsibility but now you find people they'll tell you that when you go to the beach there is the devil it's like the beach belongs to the devil it's like the rivers they are no the Bible says the earth is of the lord and the fullness thereof i tell pastors come to the beach speak over the ocean saying you marine spirits i silence your activities you marine kingdom i silence your powers when you do that, you'll frustrate the witches. You'll frustrate because witches draw power from the waters. Now, you see, these waters are very powerful. They really affect the control, the whole of this coastline. Why? Because this is the entry point of East and Central Africa. All your goods, when they come from Germany, your cars, your imported cars, they have to pass through either the port of Mombasa, the port of Dar es Salaam, and other ports which are along this coastline. They have to pass through these ports. Why? Because it is the entry point for East and Central Africa. Now, that means this place is the gate of East and Central Africa. So, what? When the, when the enemy wants to conquer the mainland, if the devil wants to conquer Uganda, if he conquers this coastline, it will be easy for him to access Uganda. Why? Because this is the gateway. So, if pastors in, in the coastline region are sleeping, are not coming to pray over the waters, speak over the waters, because evil spirits are not supposed to live there, declare the word of God over the waters to silence any forces of darkness operating in these areas. Some of the problems we are having in the mainland won't be happening. 
We are having problem because we are not exercising our dominion. The Bible said that creation is groaning, is waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. Creation has been held bondage. The water bodies have been held bondage. When Adam fell, creation was held bondage. The sea was held bondage. The sea was not created for witchcraft. But now because Adam fell, the enemy is using it for witchcraft. What do you do? Do you sit back? You leave the devil to continue this job? No, you come with authority. That's why Jesus died to reconcile everything back to himself including the water bodies including the seas including the earth including the sun everything has to be reconciled back to god because he is the creator of all those things it's important for you to know that so water bodies are very important i usually come here regularly to pray you just find me in the, at the beach walking down like this going this way going that way just praying in the spirit praying this speaking over the territory speak over the territories i speak over this land i speak over the ocean i speak over the ocean say ocean hear the word of the lord you shall do good you shall not be used for witchcraft i have my anointing oil i put anointing oil in the ocean Wherever the Spirit of God is, there's liberty. I take my Holy Communion and say, this is the body and the blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I take, you know, anywhere you take the Holy Communion, you put the cross there. Because Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Do this in remembrance of me. So it's important you do that. So these water spirits are very powerful. Most of the problems, most of the witchcraft we have in the mainland, they are being backed up by the water spirits here. Most of the witchcraft we have in, in the mainland of Kenya, going to Uganda, going to Congo, going to Rwanda, most witchcraft are being backed by this water here. So if ministers can come and paralyze this connection, if ministers can come, if intercessors can come and paralyze this connection here, you'll find some of the witchcraft you experience in the mainland will decrease. Will decrease. So it's very important for us to know these water bodies here. Marine spirits are being used by most people to do business. They are using marine spirits for business. Marine spirits also, they usually have, they usually do spiritual husband and wife to people. So many things, so many evil things are being done by marine spirits. So they need to be put to stop. And they, they can be put to stop when you come here and declare it. The Bible says, Tells us that the waters were bitter. Elisha came and took salt and put on the water and the waters became sweet. Now you can speak to these forces of creation. You can speak over them. You have authority. You have the nature of God in you. So that's what is important. You need to silence marine spirits. Marine spirit is, is responsible for backing up powerful, powerful witchcraft are backed up by a marine spirit. Even a, a, a powerful witch doctor from the mainland must come to this place for you no know, to be baptized to graduate to the next level. Anybody who has been in the occult, they'll tell you there's a point they have to come to the waters for them to to graduate or to become powerful. So it's very important to silence the forces operating in these waters because most of the witchcraft we face in the mainland, uh, they draw their power here. Why? Because the earth is the, the waters are the foundations of the earth. And the Spirit of the Lord moved upon water spirits. Spirits love water. Be it the Spirit of God, be it the Spirit of the devil. Spirits love water. So it's us to exercise authority over the waters. Let's keep on going. The Bible says, in the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word is God. I would like to emphasize Christians to study because it is ignorance which is keeping many Christians in bondage. The Bible says, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Now, years ago in 2018, God gave me a revelation to write three e-books. The first one is called The Star, The Mystery Behind Extreme Success. We, this book tends to teach about star. This book about the star teaches you about the star so that you can understand what does, what does the Bible say concerning stars. There are a lot of erroneous teachings out there about the star. But this book gives you a biblical sound knowledge about the teaching of the star. The, uh, the secret to extreme success. In this book, you're going to learn how to make your star shine. You're going to learn secrets to unlock your destiny. Get this book. The second book is called 
is called Understanding the Mystery of Times and Seasons, where I teach about times and seasons and how to discern the, se the seasons and the timings which you are in. This book is powerful. It's going to unlock a lot of uh, potentials in you. And the, the last one is called Thrones. Thrones. Thrones is a very powerful book where I teach about altars, gates, and covenants. It's a very powerful book. These three combinations will help you and will equip you to become better Christians. To get this book, you get it when you donate to us an um, amount of 20 US dollars. When you donate 20 US dollars or more and you send me the email, I'll get you this book, I'll send this e -books in these three ebooks in your email and it will bless you and your life never be the same again. Thank you. The Altar of Islam. Now, this is one of the most powerful altars along the coastline of East Africa. Now, um, I took you to Fort Jesus and I showed you Fort Jesus. The essence of me showing you for Jesus is to show you the patterns which took place at the coast of uh, the coastline of East Africa. Now, according to the patterns, you know, for Jesus is just one of the structures which was set up. There are many other structures along the coastal strip which was set up by the ancient people as a way of creating dominance. Now, the Fort Jesus and uh, many other structures were initially set up by the Portuguese, the Christians, the missionaries who had come to preach the gospel. But now, uh, later on, the Arabs, the Muslims came. They were very powerful. The, the Arabs and the Muslims came. They are very powerful. They were able to subdue the, the Portuguese and get them and drive them out of the Fort Jesus. So that's why you find at some time, at some time, the, the coastal strip was under the rule of the Sultan. Now, since that time, there was dominance of the Islamic religion in this area. So much dominance. And this is one of the powerful altars which exists in the coastal strip. It controls the coastal strip majorly. It is stronger than the altar of Christianity. Now, why is it stronger? Because of the dedication. Islamic is a religion whereby its members are dedicated. People pray, somebody prays five times a day. A Christian prays whenever he feels like they are dedicated. They go to the mosque all the time. They are dedicated in, you know, in whatever rules or the commandments which they are given in the Islamic uh, religion. They, f they follow it to the letter. Now, that, that commitment, you know, an altar is commitment to deity. That commitment, it makes the altar stronger. And that's why they are able to have dominance. They were able to have dominance before. They were able to drive out the Portuguese and the Christians who had who were at the Fort Jesus and at the you know the coastal strip until they had dominance. Since um, since then, the coastal strip was under the rule of the Sultan, who was obviously a Muslim. Till now, the coastal strip is still under the influence of Islam. Now, Islam is very powerful. It's very powerful because of the dedication, uh, because of the commitment of its members. Now, I want you to know, because of this dedication, you find that anywhere there is Islam, there is prosperity. Look at Dubai. The life in Dubai, Muslims, the altar of Islam has been able to produce what you see in Dubai. Look at Saudi Arabia, Qatar, you, the entire UAE. That's the altar of Islam, which is behind those regions. And... Those are the one of the richest regions, as we are talking today in the world. Our people, our young people, our neighbor force, young men come from Africa to go to Dubai to look for work, Saudi Arabia to look for work. Why? Because there is employment. The altar of Islam has been able, you know, to prosper them. You know, when you are committed to an altar, an altar prospers you, an altar backs you up. That's how important an altar is. Whoever raises an altar controls the place, controls the economy, controls the territory, and controls everything in that area. Now, for instance, at the coastal strip uh, here in Mombasa, most of the apartments, high-rising apartments which are built, they are built by the Muslim community. They are built by the Somali, and you know, most Somalis are Muslims. And you find in most apartments, they always have a mosque in one house. They have dedicated one house to be a mosque. 
to train people, to train their young ones about their religion. That shows how dedicated they are compared to Christians. Christians, they claim they are powerful. They, we, are the head and, we are the head and not the tail, which I believe. But now when you come to the ground, if you look around, no, let me tell you something. If you want to know the strongest altar, look at the economy. Who controls the economy? Who controls the business? Who controls the policies? Who controls politics? Who controls every... When you look around the social environment of any city, you're able to know the altar which is strong in that region. For instance, when you come to, a, to, to the coastal strip, you, you'll notice the altar of Islam is the strongest because most businessmen, billionaires, are Muslims. Most people own properties. They build uh, high-rise apartments, investments. They are Muslims. Most leaders, politics, are Muslims. Most billionaires, people who have big jobs, big industries, are Muslims along the coastal strip. Why? Because the altar of Islam is stronger. So if you want to know in any region which altar is stronger, look at the economy which they have. Look at the surrounding. Who owns the businesses? Who owns the, you know, the, the, who runs the economy? Who runs the politics? It will be able to answer you and give you a clear view on who, which altar is strong. Now, this altar is still dominant till today. And because of their dedication, it will continue to be dominant. Now, I'll show you around the buildings. You, you will see the buildings in this footage. You will see the, the buildings and you understand why the Islamic community is strong because they control, they control almost the economy. Not only in the coastal trip, even we go to the interior, go to Nairobi, go to other parts of even Kampala, you'll find the Somalis are there, the Muslim community are there, building structures building malls, building investments, and you'll find they are always dedicated to their God. They are dedicated to their prayer. They're dedicated to their fasting. They're dedicated to the Islamic law to the fullest. That's why you find them. They are able to be successful. Now, this is a great challenge to Christians. This are, we claim that we are the head and not the tail, but when we come to the ground, things are different. When you come to the ground, you look at their businesses are Look at their businesses around. You will not find a Christian. If anything, you find them. They are not that big. So this is a challenge. This is a very challenge. The altar of Islam is three. The strongest and most dominant altar we find along the coastal strip. Now, another altar we want to talk about is the altar of Christianity. And yes, I am born again, and I represent the Christians. Now, we have talked about other altars, but let's talk about the altar of Christianity. Yes, the altar of Christianity, the Bible tells us, we are supposed to be the head and not the tail. Above and not beneath. They sit on the hill that cannot be hidden. But now, when you look around, the people who control the economies are not Christians. The people who have a say are not tongue-speaking, born-again believers. We, we, we stay in church, we sing, we claim, we talk about many things, but when it comes to the manifestation, it is not there. We have zero manifestation. The, the only thing we can achieve as Christians is building churches, but we don't have, you know, born-again believers who own properties, born-again believers who run the economy, born-again be believers who have influence in policies, influence in government. Now, if you want, I, I, I said previously, if you want to know and a dominant altar, an altar which controls the territory, you will know who are the people who control the economy, who are the people who own most businesses, who are the people who have the say in that area, who owns most shops, who owns most buildings. You will know the dominant altar and the altars which they serve. That's very important. Now, in Mombasa, I can give you an example of, of ministries who have been able to make exploits here in, in Mombasa and as I said, and I explained in the previous part about the elephant tasks, I talked about the elephant tasks in the book of Zechariah 18. He said that these are the four horns which scatter Judah. The role of that altar is to, is to scatter. You find if you, if you are a pastor in this region, you find yourself scattered. That's why you find Christians are scattered. Muslims are prospering because there's an altar which has been raised to scatter Judah. Because we are the seed of Judah. We come from the tribe of the Lion of Judah. 
Now, it is very, very important to understand how to become, how to make our altar dominant. And I, I say it, we should invest so much in prayer. Now, prayer itself is not enough. We also should be practical. Take our kids to school. Let us learn things. Let us know how to invest. It is very important to make the altar of Christianity stronger. And I want to give you a challenge. Any pastor or any businessman, any person who dwells at the coastal strip of East Africa and is able to, to subdue it by prayer, any Christian who is able to subdue the forces which control the coastal strip by prayer, that person has a power to become a uh, uh, has the power to become very, very influential even across the mainline. I'll give you an example. You know, Pastor Nanga, Pastor James Maina Nanga started his ministry in Mombasa. He used to preach at a place called Railway Roundabout. Him and Pastor Wafula, the now Bishop Wafula. Pastor Nanga started from Mombasa. He, he was once arrested at, uh, at uh, Shimolatewa. Now, he started his ministry. He used to to pray at the Gorilla prayer base. In uh, Mombasa, we have a place called Gorilla prayer base near the ocean where ministers go and pray the fast. Pastor Nanga used to fast and pray in that area, fighting the principalities, fighting the altars, subduing the altars in this coastal strip. That's why you find Pastor Nanga was able to rise and his ministry was able to become a voice. People don't, uh, don't become powerful just like that they have these are their forces you have to subdue the moment you subdue those forces you you you'll notice that you, you are gaining visibility people begin to listen to you that's why you find the ministries like nanga nanga started from bombaza the ministry grew became powerful he went to nairobi it became more powerful because it was because he conquered the coastal strip Apostle James Maina Nanga, it was easier for him to conquer Nairobi. If in Nairobi, he got a land at a very prime place along Haile Selassie Avenue. That's a very prime place at the CBD of Nairobi. Why? Because he was able to conquer the powers of the coastal strip. Once you conquer these powers of the coastal strip, any other power in the mainland becomes easy, a walkover. Another example is Pastor Wilfred Lai. Wilfred Lai also used to pray at the at the Gorilla base, we felt Lai's ministry grew. grew. Do you know that, as you're talking now, Pastor Lai, or Bishop Lai, has one of the biggest church auditorium in Bamburi, JC Bamburi, one of the biggest church auditorium in Kenya. And uh, in here in Kenya, Nairobi being the capital, Nairobi being the capital, we expect that Nairobi to have bigger churches than Mombasa, but here in Mombasa, we have one of the biggest churches in Kenya. In fact, the biggest church in, in Kenya, the second biggest in Kenya, JCC Bamburi. Pastor Lai was able to subdue the principalities as, at the coastal strip. That's why he rose. People don't just rise. People rise because they are able to subdue the, the altars and to bind the strong man. Another example is Pastor Ezekiel Odiero. Many people have heard about Pastor Ezekiel. Pastor Ezekiel is not popular. Do you know? I've done stories about him. Pastor Ezekiel started somewhere in a call Mikoroshone in Shanzu. And he, he started ministry. Prayer, prayer. He rose. He was able to subdue the powers at the coastal strip. Look at the minister of Pastor Ezekiel today. Pastor Ezekiel is one pastor who is making many people travel from many parts of Kenya to visit him at Mavueni. He recently bought a big land and put up a new church. Right now, Pastor Ezekiel Church is 45,000 seater capacity. There is no church in Nairobi which has 45,000 seater capacity. Pastor Ezekiel in Kilifi, Kilifi, Mavueni, has set up a 45,000 seater capacity church. You see, he has an international school, Kilifi International School, one of the most prestigious schools we have in the coast, in the coastal strip of Kenya. He has, you know, he has put up guest houses. If you go to Mavoni, it's a city of, of its own. He has built a city, a university is coming up. Listen, listen, you know, if you look at the economics, where Pastor Zeken is, is a, is a place whereby People don't have money because Kilifi 
is uh, even Mombasa is more advanced than Kenifi. Kenifi is kind of a remote place compared to Mombasa. Um, specifically, Mavon where it is, it's a remote place. But he bought that place. But now the whole world is coming to him. The whole world is watching. People don't be people don't rise just like that. People have, have risen because they were able to subdue the forces which were at the coastal strip. So as as I'm telling you, those who are able to subdue these forces in the coastal strip, they rise to become powerful. They rise to become influence, influential. Even their voices are heard across the land, at the coast and also in the mainland. That's example of Pastor Ezekiel. He's one of the biggest pastors as we are talking today. When he does crusade, many people come. He, his ministry, he was able to grow in this because he was able to conquer the powers which control the coastal strip. This Whoever controls the power, subdues the power at the coastal strip, his influence is greater than any other person. Because the coastal strip remains to be a gate, a gate which controls the East Africa. The, the coastal strip is a powerful gate. There are altars which are there. So whoever controls the, the gates has the voice, has the influence, and has the power. So that's why we see Pastor Zekel has become big now. Some people may say that, oh, he's conning people, he's deceiving people. Do you think it is easy? You talk and people listen to you. You know the fact that you talk and people listen to you and people to follow you is not easy? It's not easy. If you think it's easy, start your church. See how many people will come. You say that he's selling water. Okay, you also come up with your water. Sell it. See how many people will buy. You say, oh, you try, start a church. See how far it will go. It is not easy. People don't just rise by gimmicks. They rise because they are able to subdue the forces which are controlling a certain territory. So it's important. This is an example which I've shown you. The people who have subdued the power of the coastal strip, you will see their voices have gone all over the world. So it's an important thing you should know. Yes, the mainland is important, but most powers most of the demonic activities is concentrated at the coastal strip because the coastal strip remains to be a gate remains to be a gate remains to be a gate this is why you find even in kenya the national anthem came from a pokomo lullaby from the coast that shows how powerful the coastal strip is the national anthem of kenya came from a pokomo lullaby which is from the, their tribe from the coast the first president of Kenya died at the coast. Understand? The first president of Kenya died at the coast. The coast is such a powerful gate. This coastal strip is such a powerful gate to possess. Very powerful gates to possess. Whoever possesses the gates at the coastal strip will have a stronger voice in the mainland. That's why you find even witchcraft is more practiced at the coastal strip. Now, another altar which I'd like to talk about is the altar of witchcraft. There is a lot of witchcraft at the coastal strip. A lot of witchcraft. Most witches from the mainland, they usually come at the coast for graduation. If they need higher power, they'll need to come at the coast. You know, uh, those who have been in witchcraft and have given their life to Christ, they'll tell you that when you go at the ocean, there's, all, there's a place where they are taken inside the ocean. There is a city inside the ocean where you meet Lucifer. And now after that point, you notice when you graduate to become, you know, a big short witch. So there's a lot of witchcraft in the coastal strip. Very strong, high level witchcraft. That's why people talk about Pemba in Tanzania. If you've heard uh, again the story of John, James Kawalia, he was taken by his mom to Pemba. There's a lot of witchcraft. There's a lot of witchcraft at the coastal strip. So, and uh, I explained it uh, when in, in the part of the marine of the marine kingdom. So we need also to subdue the witchcraft which uh, operates at the coastal strip. We need to subdue because when you walk around the city, everywhere you go, you'll find signposts of which doctors signpost you are being told to go to a witch doctor they do this they do that so anywhere there's witchcraft a lot of lives are being imprisoned because witchcraft is about imprisonment 
they imprison people's life through witchcraft. So the church has a work, a lot of job to bring deliverance in these areas, to disarm the forces of witchcraft. Because wherever there are witchcraft, destinies are exchanged. Whenever there are there's witchcraft, lives are being hurt, lives are being destroyed. So it is necessary for the church to rise and deal and subdue the, these powers of witchcraft. Now, um, there is an answer to this question in the part which I explained about the marine kingdom. When we subdue the powers of, of the marine kingdom, you paralyze the witchcraft. I told you about Moses. When Moses went to Egypt, the first thing he did, he turned the water into blood. Egypt was using river Nile for witchcraft power. Egypt was drawing the witch, his witchcraft power from river Nile. So that's why Moses had to, the first thing he had to do is to turn the water into blood. By turning water into blood, he was paralyzing the power base of Egypt. So that's why he was able to conquer it and subdue it. If Moses wouldn't, wouldn't have started with turning water into blood, he, he could have problems because if he'd have tried to do more miracles, Pharaoh would have attacked him. But now because he had paralyzed Pharaoh, the power base of Egypt, which was River Nine, by turning water into blood. Pharaoh was helpless in the life uh, before Moses. That's why he said that he made well, uh, uh, Moses a god unto Pharaoh. And uh, Aaron was uh, his prophet. So even as we read the story of Exodus, you will get to know Moses uh, showed great power. In Egypt, why? Because the first thing he did, he subdued the powers. The you know witchcraft draws power from the water, from marine spirits, either rivers or ocean. So it's important also, as ministers, I usually challenge pastors take time to go to the oceans, to the rivers, pray, anoint them. Don't say oceans are for the devil. Oceans are not for the devil. Rivers are not meant for witchcraft. Stop that notion. Jesus was baptized in the river. Jesus was baptized in River Jordan. When he came, he came out, he was full of the Holy Ghost. So don't tell that. Just, just say, oh, don't go to the river. No, rivers were created to serve God. What we need to do, the Bible says, creation is groaning and waiting for the manifestations of the sons of God. So when we exercise our authority by reclaiming creation back to God, by speaking over the oceans and the river, say, oceans and river, hear the, the word of the Lord, you shall not be used for witchcraft. You shall not be used for any other sorceries. You shall be used for the goodness, to bring up the goodness of God in the life of the people. That's what to do, to overcome the forces of witchcraft. Now, another altar which uh, we should note of is the altar of Freemasonry. That's one of the powerful altars. Now, this altar is not only found at the coastal strip. It's found all over the world, the altar of Freemasonry. Now, Freemasonry, people always know that. It's linked to the worship of the devil. And now, they recruit people. They have people in, uh, in prominent people in government, prominent people, prominent businessmen, influential people. They, are, they keep those people there with an agenda to influence, you know, satanic agenda into the world. That's why we have these Freemasons, the Illuminatis. Now, Freemasons' altars are scattered all over the world. And it's one of the uh, altars also which are, which are found along the coastal strip. Now, it's the same way. When we can neutralize, we can neutralize the effect by prayer. We can neutralize the effect of all these altars by prayer. By prayer. The Bible says that, he has given us the keys of the kingdom. Understand? God has given us the keys of the kingdom. And the gates of hell shall not prevail. So no gate of hell can prevail over the believer. So if we take the initiative, the point of this documentary is to make believers wake up. To see these things. Rise up to the occasion. Rise up to the intercessory. Rise up and with strategic, strategic thinking. Rise up and see how to make this change. We are in the last days because if you fold your hands, the enemy does not sleep. The enemy is out there recruiting people. The enemy is there planning how to destroy your home, planning how to ruin your nation, planning how to ruin your, your business. So we need to wake up and step up so that we can defeat the devil and he's defeated in Jesus' name. Hello guys, I hope you are blessed by these revelations. Now, these insights were given to me by the Holy Spirit 12 years ago. 
when I was beginning my ministry and I asked the Lord show me the mystery which govern this city because it's important when we are preaching the gospel we are not just preaching we are taking over territories for God and you cannot take territories blindly you cannot take a territory which you don't know what is inside it you don't know the mysteries that govern it that's why even when people go to warfare they first need to gather intelligence Remember the story of Moses, he sent the 12 spies. You need to gather intelligence before you go into warfare so that you know how you can take over. Now these are the secrets which God revealed to me. And the Holy Spirit said that these patterns affect all the places on the face of the earth. When you go to any place, if it's not the ocean, it's the mountains. If it's not the mountains, it's the valleys. There are so many places which affects the spirituality of that area and uh, by the grace of God I'm going to travel to as many parts of the world as possible to sh reveal to you and to show you these mysteries which govern cities which will give the church the key of the kingdom so that they can subdue all the forces of the devil remember Jesus said that the gates of hell shall not prevail I'm Cleofa Swanyama. See you in the next video.